Well, hello there, and this is Auntie, and I am here to do my recap review of my 600-pound life Delana story, season 12, episode 3. Are y'all ready to get into this? <laughs> Let's do it. Everybody needs a sweet old auntie. Everybody needs. With a woo woo and a boop boop. Auntie that's right. You can't make up. Now you know that these are some crazy motherfuckers. So why? Well, welcome back, everybody, and this is Auntie, and if this is your first time being here, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and to all of my new subscribers, thank you all so much for hitting that subscribe button and joining this family. To all of my nieces, nephews, and my members who have been here with me for the long haul, thank you all so much. For your continued support. Now, let me see what I just did. <laughs> Hold on. I just unplugged something. Uh, okay. We still here. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Let me see if I need to turn on subscribe mode. Nope, Ray Della's here. Thank you, Ray Della, for being here. Y'all, was this a crazy episode or no? Child, we met Delana out of Tennessee. And honey, when I'm telling you that I was tied, done, and through with Delana, I was tired, done and through. Honey, when they opened up this episode, they had a bed and an easy chair. Child, I don't know if the, it was a lazy boy or what the husband was sleeping in, but it damn sure won't no bed. And we saw Delana laying up against that wall with them dogs up in that bed with her like that. Child, she said when she wake up in the morning, she is thankful to just be alive another day. And we knew that we were in for a bumpy ride. Honey, Delana got up out that bed and was squeezed up on that wall like that, hunty. And Said that she had disclaimer. Viewer discretion is devised because when we talk about these people, we gag, we roast, we toast them. Okay. If you can't handle it, roll on out. But honey, when Delana got up out that bed, there was a nasty, stank chair waiting for Delana. Now, at first I thought these was puppy pads that I was seeing <laughs> around this fucking house until we saw the stains on these pads. Delana got up out that bed, honey. She was squeezed up on the honey. That all that 
Oh, that one. Okay. All that was going on with the goings on. She got on this bed and she, y'all, she had an office chair with wheels on it, bitch. And I'm telling you right now, this is how she goes to the bathroom, how she goes to the kitchen. How she goes to everywhere in this house. She is on this rinky-dee, dinky-dee, raggedy ass office chair. Burgundy. Tan down the middle. So we see her go to, y'all excuse my fingernails. Oh my goodness. I've been working on a railroad bitch, okay? She goes into the bathroom. And she said that she takes a bath every other day. And I said, you a whole ass lie. So she calls her husband, James, into the bathroom with her. Bitch, when she got up and he was sitting on the bed, he was sitting on the bed like, I think that James is completely grossed out by Delana. Delana sits on the toilet. She says she got to get on that chair, bitch. She's got to roll on that chair. So she tells him to come into the bathroom to turn the shower on for her. So he goes to turn the shower in on for her. She gets up to get back in that chair, bitch. And then she... <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I gotta get it out. Bitch, were you talking about Hershey chocolate? A melted monkey Reese cup? It was so much on that pad. She got her Irish up. Went and sat back on the doo doo. Okay, the doo doo pad. Now, James evidently is blind, bitch, or needs some glasses because she backed that thing up to that bathtub. Since she got to sit on the edge, the bitch is sitting on the outside of the bathtub. And I'm looking at the chair, and the chair got pure D. In it. I know y'all think I'm lying. I tried to take snapshots. I couldn't even get them. It was so much doo-doo on that pad. I was like, did she wipe her? Y'all, I rewinded that back. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if y'all did, but I said, bitch, I know you lying. I said, I know that this ain't pure D smudged up doo doo on a doggy pad. So she gets into the bathroom. She got lipedema. I'm talking about this bitch skin look like an alligator. She got skills everywhere. And said that she got rolls in places that she ain't even supposed to have. So she done took her ass down to the dollar store, got her one of them little sticks with the um, 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 scrubber on the end, took the scrubber off the end, wrapped it up, like that there, like that right there. It's wrapped up like this. She got to take a stick with a washcloth and go all up. I mean, I said, <laughs> bitch, I know you lying. 
Y'all, she had that thing down in the crack and crevices of her leg. And honey, the stick was coming up like that there. Like that there. And you taking a bath every other day? No. You took this bath for the camera eyes. Because ain't no way in the world you going to tell me that a stick and a washcloth is cleaning up all of that dude. I did never, not every time, see her take this stick, go up in the back, and wash this shit. Ain't no way in the world you're going to tell me that this grown, rusty tail ass woman don't have infections coming out the yang yang batch. When you got a stick and a washcloth? Are you kidding me? A stick and a washcloth. She gets out. No, because she never was in the tub. I don't know how she got wrenched, okay? Because at this point, it's not wrenched. She's getting wrenched off. And she gets back on that sh dag on puppy pad. It was puppy pads lined up in the bathroom. The dogs that she had was little dogs, but they was older dogs. And bitch, you know they ain't using them. She got puppy pads because she probably pissing and sh everywhere. Y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all when I saw that, I said, this some nasty sh right here. So we just like watching her slide on her chair. The floor in the house just needs to just be demolished, gutted. She didn't tore the towel up, the wood up, the damn um seams from the lamination to the daggone wood to the like the floor in her house is ripped the fuck out. Whoever is renting, she's renting that home from, gotta gut that bitch. Those floors were horrendous because this bitch rose. And a office chair from this place to that place with James in tow. James had to have been, James had to have been homeless. I mean, James must have ain't had she. So she goes to tell us her story. That she was a little girl being raised by her cousin. Her and her sister was raised by the cousin. Because the mother had some issues. Okay? She ain't really going to what the issues are. But we can imagine what the fuck it was. So her and the sisters being raised by the cousins. She said that, you know. They had a good life down there. The mother lost custody to them and came back. She said one day the mother came back, picked up her and her sister, said that they was going out, drove them a few miles or yards or whatever, told the sister to get out, kept her in the car, and didn't bring her back for six months. So, of course, the family is wanting her to be back. She said that the mother, in order to make her happy, gave her food. She didn't know she was overeating, but she said that she knew that that's why the mother did it, so she could be on the mother's side. Eventually, the mother brought her back, and the family was happy. Every time she talked about her eating, it was somebody else's fault or something she didn't know. So she says that she got into this relationship with the dude. They was doing the do. She got pregnant. 
she said that this month became abusive. And so she was pregnant by him. She said that she went full term and had a stillborn baby. The two of them broke up. Ten months later, she got into another relationship with another man. This man she married. She married him, and out of that relationship came a son. She said that he became abusive, and she decided she was going to divorce him. She said that she had the son for a year. They went to court. Because she didn't have a lawyer, she lost custody of that son. Then, no, then this one she got into. Ten months after, she got into another relationship with another man. Out of that union came a daughter named Savannah. Okay? She said the same thing happened and she was like, oh no, he's not going to take my baby from me. I'm going to keep this baby. So she kept Savannah. But when Savannah was 12 years old, okay, her and Savannah got into an argument. Okay, they was arguing. All right. While they, after they argued, 12 year old Samantha left her house. Now she says that, that Savannah left because she was embarrassed by her weight. So that means that she was fat all that time. She said that she was so depressed that she spent 20, no, 12, was it 72 hours, three days of doing nothing but eating. If your daughter was ashamed of your weight and left your house at 12 years old, you were already fat and nasty. You already was. Let me tell you something. Delena had a way of mincing words, bitch. She was a lie from the beginning. Then she said that after her daughter left, she went on a dating app. And that's when she met James. She said she liked his face and all of that, so she swiped left, swiped right on him. He said that her weight wasn't a problem for him then. He liked her face and her personality. So she said that, you know, he said when they had their first date, they went out to breakfast because she was working at night. I ain't never hear Savannah, I mean, hear Delana say she had no job. Not nary one time. I pictured her living off the system. If you got to live off the system, you got to live off the system. But I guarantee you that she was 500 pounds at that point and getting some type of subsidy, bitch. I, I, I don't have a doubt in my mind that that's the kind of mother she was anytime her daughter walked out on her. So then after the daughter walked out on her, she got a relationship with James. The two of them you know, was going out on dates and stuff like that. And then the next day, you know, okay, the daughter was like, I mean, um, James, she she had a a, 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 a a sore on her leg. She said the doctor saw she had a tick bite. So she's been five days, bitch, and five nights in the hospital. And when she got home, they say you need a 24-hour care. Y'all know this bitch was big then. Y'all know that that wasn't no damn tick bite. It probably was an infection because the lymphedema, the amount of ash and decay around her feet, she was jaundiced. Even to her fingertips was yellow. This bitch looked jaundiced to me. I don't know if y'all saw it, but I saw it. So this dude, James, from the day she got home from the hospital, when he was going to the hospital to take care of her, when he got home with the alleged tick bite, that wasn't a tick bite, bitch, I'm sure that the tick bite came from washing her eyes and being on them pads 
That's where the hole in the lid came from. So James said he went home with her and never left that one. And I'm thinking, where did he live before he went and lived in her house? But okay, this ain't about James. So she says that she doesn't go outside. She do what the fuck she want to do. If she don't want to go, she don't go. So James is up in the kitchen. She said when she get up in the morning, she wants that damn breakfast. She wants food immediately. We see James in the kitchen cooking eggs, bacon, because she says she loved her some crispy bacon, bitch. He made a whole look like two dozen, bitch. Two dozen biscuits. I'm talking about my mama biscuits. I'm talking about buttermilk biscuits. I'm talking about Hungry Jack, bitch. I'm talking about Pillsbury. This guy had a whole damn Thanksgiving platter full of eggs and biscuits and um, a bacon and sauces and some moats on here. And she sat her urge up there with one leg up and the other one with her booty on the floor, bitch. And sat there and let James feed her all that food. James knows he's an enabler. He has admitted that he's an enabler. He just don't want to hear the bitch mouth. So she is sitting up there telling us this story about her life while she is sitting down there just stuffing food in her mouth. Bitch, I watched them plates to the end. I don't know if y'all did, but I watched them plates to the end. And them eggs and all that stuff were just about gone. It looked like it was four biscuits left between the two of them. She ate like I don't know what. But she now has gotten tired. Next thing you know, he asked her, what's she going to do today? Nothing. Bitch, I'm telling you, it didn't even look like an hour later. He was like, you hung? She was like, you hungry? I want something to eat. You just sat there and ate enough food to have a family reunion for 50 of your nearest and dearest relatives. And here, they talk about going out. He said, what you want? You want some fast food? She was like, yeah, I want some fast food. So he gets in the car. Now, she don't drive. She ain't been out the house. She told me she's scared of falling, bitch. I guess you are. She rolling around in that chair with that floor tore up. Who fucks somebody's house up like that? But, bitch, he comes back in there with a McDonald's tote bag, bitch, and a backpack. She just... She got that McFlurry out his hand. She was sucking that McFlurry and eating that quarter pounder with cheese. And honey, she had her french fries and everything. And bitch, when they pulled that camera back, she had two McFlurries. They had chicken. They had ham cheeseburgers with the yellow wrapper on it, stacked up like a pyramid, bitch. She already, I saw a Big Mac container, because y'all know the Big Mac container is, is tan. Y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all, this woman sat there and gulped this food down with a whole pyramid, bitch, of McDonald's cheeseburgers. She was trying to hide it. They, they pulled that bitch. They pulled that dang old camera back. And honey, when I saw all of that food and he's sitting over there, honey, look like he had nothing but a filet of cheese and some french fries with all of this food stacked up to the ceiling and she going to have the audacity, the audacity to say, I'm going to go ahead on and take me a nap. He said, where she said now? I finished the rest of it when I get up. Bitch.
they had so much McDonald's food, they could have fed a whole classroom of kindergartners. That's how much food they were eating. And she sat there and said she was going to sleep, but now she's going to Dr. Niles. So she's laying up there on the sofa, and here come James. Hey, wake up, big girl. It's time for us to go to the grocery store. If we're going to go, let's go now. Now, we didn't heard her say 50 times how her knees be buckling. She ain't got no, no, no scrimp up in them. We see her sliding back and forth on the chair. Bitch, I'm telling you, we knew disaster was just around the corner. He got her up. She slid that chair. He said, I'm going to bring the van around. So he brings the van around to the side of the trailer. She had to do a bitch. Where my walking stick? She another big bitch with a walking stick. Fuck her. Fuck her. Fuck her. Bitch, we know that this ain't gonna be good. When she got up, And proceeded out of that door. Mine is that shitty chair she been on. We knew. Which we knew. Well, y'all know. Y'all know they good and fat. And good and ain't walking. When they count one, two, bitch, when I tell you, I said, This ain't gonna be good. She got out there on the porch. She said, Why are you bring the truck up so far? You ain't get close. You need to get closer. <laughs> you ain't bring the truck up. Come on. He like, it's okay. I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm gonna fall away. Bitch. She down them. Oh, oh. Bitch, she got to the van. She got down to the bottom of the step. Bitch, when she got down to the bottom of the step, she said the ground ain't even. He said, I ain't got shit to do with that. I can't fix the ground, the ground uneven. Just keep pushing. So, bitch, she on her stick. She trying to get down to the van. And she get to the van. And one quarter of her ass been in the van. And she panicked. Oh, God. No, wait, wait. Hold me, hold me, hold me. Wait. Oh, my God. Wait. And she gets out. Now, at this point, she got the one on wheels, bitch. It's sliding around, and she's she behind it. She gave, gave, she gave up on the walking stick. Now, she on wheels, bitch. And we know. We knew. She got to walk it back. And the next thing you know. That knee downtown on the left hand side, bitch, gave way. Bitch, 
when I tell you I slow motioned her ass falling back, bitch, she was like, I'm falling. That bitch was over. I know it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Bitch, James was standing in like. <laughs> Next thing you know, they had this bitch down, down on the ground. I'm falling and I can't get up. Oh, no. Next thing you know, her mother came, honey. They had to say biological downtown at the bottom. And her little um, cousin, nephew, whoever the hell he was. And bitch, she there at this point, she propped up. Bitch, wait, hold on, let me miss you. Let me see, make sure I'm get some fat. Get that fat out. Let me see. Bitch, they was like, you all right? She was like, no, I feel. The mother was like, 911 up this motherfucker. 911, because ain't no motherfucker out here going to try to pick you up. She was like, the way I was getting up. The mother was like, 911. She was like, yeah. Like, we need um 911. We need assistance out this month. They was like, what's going on? She was like, my daughter fell. She down on the ground, and we need y'all to, you know, do a three alarm. Come get her ass. So the lady was like, is she hurt? She was like, no, I ain't hurt. The lady, her mother was like, yeah, she ain't hurt. She just 600 pounds. Send a hope to three alarm this month, okay? Send, just call every county around in Tennessee, bitch, because she's downtown on the ground and we can't get her out. So she down on the ground, she crying. So honey, next year, you know, they bring up one ambulance. Then another ambulance. Bitch, they bring up everybody. We just see men walking. They like, okay, let's assess this situation. She down on the ground. Uh -oh. How y'all doing? They was like, all right, so what we gonna try to do, we gonna try to put a blanket up underneath. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can blanket her ass, right? So, you know, they want to put the blanket on her, but the bitch, the blanket look like a washcloth, bitch. So they said, okay, that ain't going to work. So, you know, they was like, okay, let's just, just, just try to find a way to get her up and everything. So, you know, they tried to get her up. They had about 20 of them, bitch. So, you know, they got her going up there. Thank y'all. They said, let's try to get her up. We got to heave ho. We heave hoeing up there. Heave ho. You ready? Heave ho. On three, bitch. Heave. One, two, three. Uh, uh. So they got her up. They holding her every week. Them knees are just buckling, bitch. At this point, she ain't got no grip on the ground, nothing, right? So they get her up on the step. You all right? We got you. Yeah. All right. Here we go. One. One, two, three. Oh, bitch, they get her up to one step. They was, she was like, oh, my God, got two more to go. Wait a minute. So that same right knee gave out. Now she's down on the. Oh, God, wait, my knee is going into this wood. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. So they was like, look, this ain't going to work. Honey, they went over there on the side of the patio. Barney Fife stood his ass up there and was like, you know what? This ain't got but one step on it. We're going to go ahead on and redecorate this bitch's porch. <laughs> bitch, next to you know, they went over there. Took the railing off the porch of somebody else's house, bitch. And they out there pop the whole banister off. Had her come around it. This bitch got a, 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 a 911 rescue and a remodel on the same episode. They remodeled her whole patio. 
they bring her around them. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So they put her in a wheelchair. Okay, come on. Ah. So they got her back and they backing it up. Beep, 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 beep. You know, they got to back her up, get her up on the air, right? Beep, 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 beep. So they got in a position. Because they didn't remodel their house and took the patio, the, the thing off. So they got a beep, beep. She was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It was like, all right, we can ready to put you up here. They put her up there. She was like, wait a minute. I got it. Oh, God, I'm good. Oh, God, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, a good time. Bitch, they get her up there. The guy wheel her around. They get her to the front door. She got a stick. They give her a little stick back. She gets on down there. They help her. They sit her down. I said, now, you know, when they got to come and remodel your house to get you up in that mother, none of these guys saw an opportunity to pick her up. They was like, we going to take this whole joint and remodel, rearrange, reorganize. Dude was standing on the outside watching her going through that house and saw that chewed up ass floor and was like, I ain't got nothing to do with this. Bitch, they get her inside and she happy as I don't know what. I don't know if they ever made it to the grocery store. Because she had already said she don't do sh anyway. So they gets her all the way, you know, gets her in and everything. And she happy. And now she talk about going to doctor now. So we see her and James. James pulled the van up to the remodeled patio, bitch. She goes in. She gets into the van. I got half of me in. I got the other half in. Now he got to put her feet in. It's so much pee stains on her daggone shoes. I was like, James ain't got no money to get her brand new slippers for the doctor now visit. Why in the fuck are her shoes pissy? Like that. I'm talking about pussy. It's bad enough. She got all that lymphedema and that dry skin and them. Oh my God. Then she got these same black pants on with holes in them, bitch. And I mean, when I say a hole, that hole followed her from the beginning <laughs> to the end of the month episode, even when she lost weight. But we're going to get into that. So she goes in, in, the, in the van. Bitch, they get her in the van. She started talking about the vehicle. I said, oh, hell. They said that they just got the vehicle inspected and the vehicle is good. Bitch, 50 miles out of Tennessee. They broke down on a four-lane highway. They put on the screen the TLC producers, cameramen, gripmen, bitch, the assistant, the bag carrier, and the driver broke their own rules. And next thing you know, you see them running across a four-lane highway, pushing them on the shoulder. You knew that that piece of shit of a van y'all had wasn't so they get a a good Samaritan that got a, a tow truck business to come and try to help them. They don't even have a stick to hold their hood up, bitch. He using wood. So he says, I think I got it fixed enough for you to get to the shop. They get in it, they start it up, they start driving. The car won't go over 20 miles per hour, but eventually. They make it to the shop. They said that it was a fan that was broke on it, that they got fixed. 
And then now all of a sudden they can go. But then they get broke down. The car don't drive over 20 miles per hour. That ain't a fan. So, bitch, they get there. She's sitting in the van and everything. And I'm telling you, she cry. He says she cry all the time or it's a threat of crying. He said it drives him crazy and it stresses him the fuck out. So, they get there and everything. The man comes up and said, look, it's some other going on with your vehicle, right? Y'all been bullshitting the whole time. So, what I'm going to do. You lucky, I'm going to work on your car because there's some other shit going on. But you lucky because I also rent vehicles. So I'm going to rent you a vehicle. No, no charge. you doing a show. you going down there to Dr. Now's office. I'm going to help you out. So she was like, baby. So they get her up in a van, honey, and they going down to Dr. Now's. They stay in a little hotel. And they get up the next day and they at Dr. Now's office in the man's rented vehicle. Thank you so much, Devin Wright, for the $2 super chat. Not the land of using the office chair to get around. Devin, did you see <laughs> Did you see the episode? Wait till you see it. Thank you, boo. Thank you, Amy, for the final occasion. Hey, Auntie, it's been a while, but I'm here and watching. Love you. To teeny tiny bits. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Love you too, boo. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much, Lily Flower, for the $10 super chat. Auntie, you are a mess. Thank you for making us crack up. Thank you for being here, Lily, and for your $10 super chat. Thank you, boo. So they get to Dr. Now's office. She said that she had already started working on her weight loss. And that she was losing weight. She said the last time that she got up on the scale, she was 500 pounds. She goes in. Of course, she gets called in. Delana. She gets up. She got her pogo stick. She goes back there. She puts it, puts, goes up on the scale. You big girl when you back that thing up. Girl, look at your legs when you back that leg, back that thing up. Watch out for them knees when you back that thing up. Use the big bitch when you back that thing up. And when you back that thing up. So she back it up. We all looking at the scale. Do 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 because we know this bitch ain't nowhere near 500 pounds. That thing came up. It says 646 pounds. Bitch, James was like, she was like, she pogoed her ass on over to that chair and sat there. She was like, I'm so sorry. She had the audacity. To ask James earlier on, is he still going to love her if she lose weight? She said, he said, yeah, but it's going to make life easier for me if you do. She said, why you say that? He said, because then I ain't got to do everything for you. Then she's going to have the nerve to laugh, burp. And say brain freeze as she sat there and swallowed down two big ass large McFlurries. And now you sit up in Dr. Now's office getting escorted down to room number five at 646 pounds. So now she embarrassed. So she's going down. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good to meet you. Uh, you must be Delana. Yeah, I am. And uh, who's this you got with us? Who, who, who's this you, you brought with you, this young man? My husband, James. He was like, oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so, um, 
you know, you got a BMI <laughs> bitch. <laughs> you know, you got a BMI of 119. Um, the regular BMI is a 25. Bitch, yours is 119. Tell me about what you've been eating. Yogurt. A little container of yogurt. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the yogurt. You know, just like the regular yogurt. So Dr. Now was like. And, and so then what else do you eat? Fruits, vegetables, salad. I, I barely eat. I mean, I barely eat Dr. Now. He don't for real, don't I, James? You got a big me, Dr. Now said the month math not mathing. He said, You mean to tell me you 646 pounds with a BMI of 119 and you eating yogurt? Dr. Now was like, You you telling a lie. So why are you here? Why the fuck are you here? Broke down on the side of the road. Why are you here? She was like, you know, I want to get this weight off. He was like, this bitch is hallucinating. So Dr. Now decides he's going to go hit on and let her on the program. He told her, you follow my weight loss plan, you can lose 50 pounds. Bring your ass back here in a month, 60 pounds down. So we see them go back. We see the clock ticking. Here we are on the second month. They call Dr. Now. Dr. Now is on the phone now, bitch. Come on and sit over here, James. You know he gonna want to see you. So Dr. Now come up on the screen. Hello? Hi there. Hi. <laughs> bitch. How y'all doing? What's going on? Now, you know, Dr. Now peeking back up in your house. He looking at everything, bitch. He, he focused on you, but he also focused on your month and surrounding. And then he talks directly into the mic. So, uh, how you doing? She's like, fine. He was like, I ain't seen you and you missed your appointment. She was like, what appointment? He said the appointment at the weight loss center. You said that your van, you know, what's going on? Well, you know, we still ain't got our van fixed and everything like that. He said, yeah, and you were supposed to go to the other appointment. So uh, uh, what happened to the appointment? Well, you know, we haven't gotten a van fixed. Dr. Now was like, look, that's some bullshit. I done heard it all before. Go ahead and take your ass down there. Give way so I can see whether or not I'm a threaten to put you out my program. So go do it. Go do whatever you got to do. Take your big ass down there and go and get weighed. She's telling Dr. Now she on the program. Bush. Bush. So Dr. Now set it up for her to go and see somebody else. He got on the ball for there. Next thing you know, she goes down to the clinic. This is still days and months later. She goes down there, gets on the scale. She five, six hundred. She gained, okay, wait a minute. She was 646. She gained five pounds and asked how the it happened. So now she got to walk up out of there and call Dr. Now back. So she goes into the room and automatically, what's she doing? Crying. So Dr. Now comes on in. Hello there. All right, yeah, Dr. Now Hop. Um, so um you down at the clinic? Yes. So did you weigh? Yeah, did how much you weigh? Um I gave five pounds. Dr. Now was like, but you on a program. So what you been what have you been doing? Well, you know, I've been doing a program, but I ain't really, you know, I, I've been missing a couple of days. Dr. Now said you're eating at least six or seven thousand calories a day. There's no way in the world if you're on my plan that you haven't lost any weight. You've gained five pounds. You ain't doing sh you're wasting my time. Now, if you want to stay in the program, 
you gonna have to get serious. Well, you know, we're gonna move down there to Houston. Dr. Now said, Don't spend your coins. If you move to Houston, you're moving down here on your own. I didn't tell you to move to Houston. I didn't say you qualify for Houston. I told your big ass to lose 50 pounds. You ain't lose 50 pounds. You move to Houston, bitch. You doing it on your own. I didn't. I, I, I. What? What? Well, you know, I'm going to give it the program and I'm going to, you know, we're going to move to Houston and everything. So the next thing we know, we see her and old boy planning to move to Houston. They got their stuff packed up. They done found them a home in Houston. And here come her mama. The mama is supposed to be driving a U-Haul truck. While the, 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 uh, the husband drives another vehicle. Because she's too fat to get into the van that got all of the in it. So she's got to ride. The mother got to drive the U-Haul while he called her in the vehicle. The mother came over there, bitch. Oh, yes, the mother did. How you doing? She was like, hey, mom. The mother was like, I know I told y'all that that I was going to drive the van to Houston. <laughs> but this COVID. I just ain't feeling good. I ain't going to be able to do it. So she's sitting there like. James on the edge of the chair, like, I know you was dependent on me. Girl, I thought this thing was gone. But I just ain't in no kind of condition to drive y'all down Houston. I'm sorry. I know I disappointed you, baby. But I just fucking ain't got it to do. I'm up. Okay. The mother was like, all right, then. Give me a hug, boo. Give me a hug before my, my, before my, my fever come back. All right, James Deuces. Chuck the Deuces. All right, James. See y'all. Y'all have a safe trip. Bitch, the mother was about the house. Her whole countenance, her voice changed everything. Mama ain't had she Mama ain't even had so much of an allergy, bitch. Mama says she ain't taking her down there. So the next thing we know, we she's sitting there. She calls her brother. Hey, hey, Danny. What you doing? He was like, yeah, I'm getting ready to take mama. Now, mind you, they in their 30s, 40s, 50s. I'm getting ready to take mom to her doctor's appointment. I need your help. Danny, I need your help. We got to go to Houston and mom backed out and I really need somebody to drive me. She don't even give a fuck that he's taking his mama to a doctor's appointment. She didn't say what was wrong with mama. Is mama okay? She ain't say none of that. She just straight jumped to manipulating I'm you talking about a manipulator? You talking about a user and abuser, in my opinion? She don't give a fuck about nobody. Then she gonna have the audacity to say she's gonna see her daughter, who she ain't talked to in a good six months, bitch, and her grandbaby for the first time. And she didn't even know if the daughter was going to let her see that because the daughter don't fuck with her and don't want her around her kid. When they came up in that house with the mama, with the brother, the, the, the cousin and the daughter, the daughter didn't even greet her mother good coming through the door. The cousin gave the mother the baby. 
She didn't even want to give the mother the baby. She said that her mother wasn't sh when she was growing up. She won't nothing. She said that her mother gave her body dysmorphia because she would always talk to her about she going to be fat. She going to be this. She going to be that. She said that her mother was talking all of that trash to her, deflecting from the fact that she was a nasty, fat. She said her mother ain't do sh for her. And I figured she didn't because she don't do nothing for herself. The daughter was like, I ain't got it to do with my mother. We estranged. And I had to chuck the deuces because I've been dealing with things myself because of how my mother did not raise me. And as she used to do. And from my opinion, the mother was going from one D to another D to another D. Not using protection, getting pregnant by, oh my God. And I sat there and she was like, yeah, I'm going to take my grandbaby to Disney. Disney what? Disney who, bitch? They moved her down to Texas. She thinks the brother, she sits there on the outside. I wish I could help them move. Bitch, you can move up. up. I bet you if you had a cheeseburger, you would help move something. She sat there while they moved that whole house. Bitch, when they brought her mattress up out of that U-Haul truck, with all of that coming down, I said, bitch, that on, a, <laughs> on her mattress looked like the Mona Lisa, bitch. It looked like something Picasso did. That, that it was so many, so much do do stains on her mattress. It looked like a piece of art, bitch. It looked like an abstract picture of a waterfall, bitch, or a volcano erupting. Bitch, I said that if you turn it to the side, I guarantee you that them do do stains on that mattress look like the Mona Lisa, bitch. I guarantee you it looked like it is a moat. Five million dollar picture. That's I'm a do do what's on it. And that father looked like he wanted to drop that mattress. And James was walking with that mattress. And I could not believe that this nasty stank would take a doodle written. Then she had blue pants on, the same pants that she was sitting in in that do do down. <laughs> She was sitting in the pants down to with the doo-doo on her, and they had taken and tried to wipe the doo-doo off of it because they was wiping the doo-doo off of the back of her pants. It was white in the spot, and I'm telling you right now, it looked like they took some bleach, some Windex, bitch, some Clorox, some pledge. They, bitch, they took. We know that the doo-doo was not James's doo-doo because James was sleeping in an easy chair. A lazy boy. His lazy boy is lazier than any lazy boy you have ever met in your life because the more we saw a James, the bigger the mother got. They will sit there and say that they eating and 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 and, and, and doing a diet, and he come through the door with Subway sandwich. What they think they jared up this month? I said this is one lazy, non cooking, sliding in a chair, tearing up people's floors, ass bitch. Do do or. Over the place. Y'all, I know y'all think I'm lying. It was doo doo. 
pure D do do. I'm gonna take hold on so I don't get flagged. Hold on. I know y'all don't believe me that it was doo doo. I'm getting ready to show you this doo doo. Nasty bitch. Here we go. Now you tell me that that don't look like a motherfucking piece of art. The doo doo is sliding down. The doo doo is on one side. The doo doo look like something that Picasso. Let's see the doo doo again. So y'all don't believe me that it was doo doo everywhere on the mattress. It looked like a piece of art. There. Y'all know that this look like a hold on. Y'all know this look like an abstract piece of art, bitch. This look like something that you would get out to Marshalls or the TJ Maxx to hang up in your dining room. Let's zoom in. See if I can zoom in up on this month. Can I zoom in? God dang it, y'all lucky I can't zoom in. Abstract piece of art. And she got the nerve to, <laughs> to tell her brother when he left after he came from North Carolina to Tennessee, from Tennessee to Houston, he moving all of her doo-doo stained stuff out of her house. And she got the nerve to tell him, make sure you change your clothes. When you get before you get to the airport, he got every right to be stinking. He messing with your stinkage. They are dead today. Thank you so much, Lexi Gomez, for the final super chat. She made her own ink blood. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty self. Ain't gonna have a nerve to say something to about her brother when we didn't see her with the same pants on and seen James with the same shirt on over and over and over again. And you ain't even ashamed. You should have took it for a woman that had pride. Let's say, for instance, you were sick and you had some doo-doo on your mattress like that. You would at least cover it up with a daggone black bed a fitted sheet so your brother don't see and smell it. You ain't even got no shame. And you sliding back and forth in chairs. So they go to Dr. Now's office. 
she walking a little better because she done lost some So now it's time for her to get up on the scale. Of course, Rosie calls her. So Rosie calls her back, Delana. Delana comes back there. Rosie clears out the scale. You was a big girl when you backed that thing up. You got the doodle on you when you backed that thing up. Girl, did you wash up when you backed that thing up? You're looking kind of hot when you backed that thing up. You backed that thing up. You shitty old man. Back that thing up. You do the way Back that thing up. So she backs it up on the scale. She's down 73 pounds. So now they happy. So they go to the back room five. They get in the room five, doctor, now come back. Oh, I see you lost some weight. What were you doing? What did you change? She said, you know, I was my proportions. You know, instead of eating five Subway sandwiches, I was eating two. I cut down my McDonald's. Instead of doing four quarter pounders, two McFlurries, 16 of cheeseburgers, five large order of fries, two chocolate milkshakes when the milkshake machine working, bitch. One filet of cheese, not with the extra tartar sauce. Two apple pies instead of 12. I cut back my proportion size. Because you ain't going to tell me. We never seen her cook or prepare no meal. You ain't going to tell me that she was making an effort to eat right. She cut down her proportion size. So she dealt 73 pounds. So Dr. Nell was like, good. And when she was sitting up there lying and talking about only eating yogurt and all that kind of stuff, her husband wouldn't even look up. He said, she's sitting up here lying like this. So Dr. Nell was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and approve you for the weight loss surgery. You already down here in Houston. I'm going to approve you. Lose another 40 pounds. Next thing you know, she comes back. She lost 39 more pounds. Dr. Now said, fuck it. I, I feel like doing my robot. Let's do it. So she goes in with her pessimistic ass. I don't know if I'm going to wake up. Or, you know, she's pessimistic. And I'm always crying about something. So Dr. Now takes her into the back and everything. You know, come on, y'all. All right. First incision. Dr. Nell said, that may be oh, but I ain't slow. Let me tell you something. I still got that grip on that knife. I got that grip on that, 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 that scalpel for your eyes. Dr. Nell said, when I slide this finger, I'm, I, I, it may be shaking like this when I get up on it. But bitch, as soon as it hits skin, I'm, I'm smooth like butter. Dr. Nell said, I'm like that on that scalpel. I'm like that. He took that little coat off, that little blue coat off. He went on over there. Bitch. He said, yeah, it's time for me to get my robot. He said, I got the robot. Take all my gloves off, my jacket, my coat. I don't need my scrubs. I don't need none of this. All I need is my, my machine. They go over there. They was like, Roger that. They go over there, push the little thing on her and everything. You know, they put the doctor now sitting up in the tea, like, all right, let's do it. You know, she said, all right, robot. Going to the robot. I'm in. I'm in on the robot. Let the surgery begin. Doctor now sitting up over that joint with the precision of a of a of a, of a, of a uh, let's say a 25 year old man. Doctor now over that making it do what it do like that over the, on their hands. They like go doctor. Go. He like that. He do the surgery on her. She got her little stomach taken out. Dr. Now says successful surgery. Gone down. Next thing you know, we see them. She's walking unassisted. She didn't got rid of her stick, but she still got body issues. She says she embarrassed to be out. They went to a museum. They went to a couple of museums. They went to, you know, play pool and everything. She's walking better. She still got that big ass in the back. She still got them same pants on with the hole, but she did lose weight enough to get the surgery. We need to find out what's going on with her. 
I will look up and see, you know, what, the, what what's going on with her now. But it ain't a lot of stuff out there on her for some reason. I don't know why. I guess maybe they ain't caught. Let me tell you something. This lady right here was manipulative. Her family don't really bunk with her. When she called her brother from North Carolina and asked him to come, she was like, he's the only person in my family that I can depend on. You know why? Because she probably been fucking over everybody else. Thank you so much, my GWT, for the follow up super chat. Oh, my God, Auntie, I so needed this laugh tonight. Love you. Love you, too. She was a hot mess express. But she did get it off. But if she don't fully change her life, meaning stop depending on James, getting out there and really doing things for herself, she's going to be big again. And I usually don't say that about these my 600 pound life people. I let them live, but I am not letting her live. I do not believe that for one day she did the program. I believe she cut back on all of that food her big ass was eating. She had the audacity when she moved in that house to say that I need to put curtains up because I don't want to see these people. And you got doodle on your mattress that you ain't even embarrassed for your brother to see. Sliding around in that that shitty bitty chair. Her old nasty self. Thank you so much, Tasha J, for the nine ninety nine super chat. Auntie, your reenactments are top tier. Entertainment. <laughs> I was in stitches. I was in stitches. He's the whole. I will go, Kevin. Was in stitches the whole live. Love you. Love you too, boo. Love you too, Tasha. Y'all know I do not mess with these. So much Miss Neek asked for the four ninety nine super chat. Me too, e baby. <coughs> but I couldn't find nothing on her. Nothing. I don't usually drag these people. Hold on. Let's see. Let me see. Y'all got time? Y'all got a little bit more time? Let me see. Oh, here you go. It's, pub it's published. Okay, let's see. Distractify. So this is the new picture of her. Let me share it. Hold on. Let me share this picture Distractify got of her. This is the picture. Headshot only. Sus. I'm sus. Delana Boyer. See if I can find on Instagram. Hold on. Damn it, her page is private. 
While Delena's current weight is unclear, she seems happier and healthier in recent pictures. Delena appears to live in Hendersonville, North Carolina. So that means that she must have moved down there with her fam fam. She had to move down there with her fam fam. They say leading up to her episode release, she shared a few words on Facebook for viewers. She says, while watching, please remember that I am a real person, that this is really my life, that this was the lowest point in my life, and that I am beginning to live again. I am still a work in progress, not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be either. So now, so by now, pretty much everyone who knows me knows that I have filmed an episode of my 600 pound life. They said it looks like Delana may not have, may not have abandoned all her bad habits, but she is still moving forward and only thinking positive thought. As the show notes in the beginning, the chances of a long term successful people on the show are less than 5%. However, we still miss, uh, they say they still wish her the best. I don't think even nobody believes she's going to keep this weight off. I don't believe it. Because we saw her eating fresh at Subway. We never saw meal preps. We never saw all of that. But I'm so hoping that she got rid of that doodly mattress that she had. I would love to talk to the daughter. I would love to talk to the daughter behind the scenes and come out and report. Thank you so much to Devin Wright. Thank you so much to my Amy. Thank you so much, Lily Flower, Lex Gomez, my GWT, Tasha J, and Miss Neek S. Thank you all so much for the super chats. Thank you all so much for being here. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It don't cost you nothing. It's free. 99. Love you all so much. Thank you so much to Ray Della for holding down the chat and making sure that everybody has a wonderful time. Until we meet again, I love y'all. Y'all be safe out there in those streets and in the water. Bye, y'all.